Hi, I'm Dr. Deva Carlson. If you've come here to find out information on how to vaccinate your cat, what vaccines are dangerous for your cat, and what you should do about it, you have come to the right place. I've been a holistic veterinarian for over 30 years. I lecture internationally, I'm a best-selling author, and I write for several magazines. So let's talk about this. Are vaccinations dangerous for your cat? Well, we vaccinate our cats because we're afraid they'll get certain diseases, and we want to prevent those diseases. And many of us have accepted annual vaccinations as just a way of life. It's only a way of life because we've been made to think that we're bad pet owners if we don't vaccinate. I'm one veterinarian who's going to make you feel the exact opposite of this, that you're good pet owners if you don't vaccinate. For people in the know, for instance, the American Association of Feline Practitioners have recommended, now get this, about 20 or 25 years ago, that cats not get all these vaccines and that some of the vaccines they're getting are even dangerous to their health. Two decades later, with many more experts saying the same thing, it's finally trickling down. And some veterinarians are vaccinating cats every three years with their boosters rather than every year. In my opinion, which agrees with many of the top veterinary researchers in the field, even that's too much. Ron Schultz, PhD, and Tom Phillips, PhD, and they're both professors and chairs of departments, wrote in a prestigious and well-recognized veterinary book. In fact, it's sort of a Bible for veterinary medicine that they believe that there is no valid or scientific evidence or any proof at all that a pet should be vaccinated every year. In fact, the reverse is true, as research is showing that cats get lifelong immunity from most vaccinations. Let's take a look together at some plain and simple facts. The most important vaccine for cats to get is feline distemper. That's also called feline panleukopenia. Yet only kittens get feline distemper as a disease. So if your cat has a vaccine or has had a vaccine or two for feline distemper and your cat's not a kitten, why, why get the vaccine at all? How about if your cat is an indoor cat? How often are he or she exposed to any disease? If the vaccines are effective and long lasting and your cat is not really exposed to disease, well, why get them? And if your cat goes outside, well, the vaccine is proven to be long lasting for his or her whole life and only kittens get feline distemper anyway. But that's not the whole story. There's more. Because if vaccines did not have adverse effects on our cat's health, I wouldn't even bring this topic up. So what, cats got too many vaccines? If it doesn't hurt them and it makes your veterinarian happy, hey, what's the harm? Ah, but vaccines are not so harmless and they are considered a medical procedure now with risks and benefits. Are vaccines safe? That's the first question to ask. And the answer that I have for you is an emphatic no. Vaccines do not only cause immediate reactions like swelling at the site of vaccination or lethargy and fever. Vaccines do cause real life threatening health problems later on. Let me tell you about this. The feline panleukopenia vaccine is the fancy name for the distemper vaccine that's recommended your cat get every year in his booster shot. Remember, just because it's recommended doesn't mean it's needed. This virus is grown in a tissue or a culture of feline kidney cells. There's some distressing information concerning this vaccine, made even more distressing because something like 80 to 100% of cats over 10 years of age will go into kidney failure. Colorado State University did some research which showed that the majority of kittens developed autoantibodies to their own kidney tissue after being vaccinated for the panleukopenia feline distemper vaccine. It's just like I said in my allergy and vaccination lectures, when you get an injection that has things other than viruses, things like bovine serum or chicken embryo or kidney tissue, the recipient of the vaccine chalks these things up as enemies. In the immune system's eyes, and enemies are attacked. So cats and dogs can become allergic to beef and chicken, but cats can become actually reactive to their own kidney tissue and attack their very own kidney tissue. And each booster vaccine creates more autoantibodies to your cat's kidneys. Your cat's immune system attacks its kidneys, causing a low-grade inflammation, and as the years pass, it all adds up and kidney failure is the result. The, re the rub is that these vaccines are long-lasting. Adult cats are resistant to the disease, so the vaccine isn't even needed. The rabies vaccine and the feline leukemia vaccine cause cancer. That's not thought, that's known kind of cancer they cause is a fatal malignant tumor called fibrosarcoma. In fact, veterinary students have been trained for several years to give cats their rabies vaccine on the right hind leg and the leukemia vaccine on the left hind leg 
so that the leg or legs can be amputated if fibrosarcoma appears in the area. The fatal fibrosarcoma cancer occurs at the site of the rabies vaccination, right where it was injected. Every additional rabies or feline leukemia vaccine increases the risk of this cancer, particularly when the vaccinations are always given at the same place. It's important to note that the rabies vaccine is often required by law. This is the only vaccine you really need to consider for your grown cat, but ask for the one that's given every three years rather than once a year. Have them change legs and change sites. The feline leukemia vaccine doesn't even protect against leukemia, and it causes fibrosarcoma. The new cat AIDS or FIV vaccine is prepared in the same way and can cause cancer along with many other side effects. Every vaccination you might consider getting for your cat should be scrutinized and carefully researched. We want our pets to stay healthy and be with us for a long time. Knowledge and understanding contributes to our making wise choices so we can keep them as healthy as possible. My blog, DogAndCatVitamins.com, has lots of other handy and helpful tips for you. I look forward to seeing you there.